morning, beloveds. The uh, Facebook has rearranged the icons and just be was being weird. Hence the face. All right. We have a cold front coming. Notice the air quotes. Um, so one of my friends who's moved to Utah posted it was 39 degrees when he woke up. And I'm like, it was 76 degrees when I left my house. But it comes in tonight. So it's supposed to be 68 tomorrow and then possibly 58 on Thursday. I'm not holding my breath. <clears throat> so uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right, beloved. It is September 21st. Our title is My Faith Makes Me Whole. Our quote is, Yea, thou shalt not find any variableness in the way of God. And that is from the Quran. Faith is a mental attitude. A certain man came to Jesus, and from the inspiration of his hope and the enthusiasm of the occasion, standing in the light of one whose wick of life was ever kept trimmed and burning, feeling the warmth and color of its eternal glow, exclaimed, I believe. This was a simple, sincere, and enthusiastic response to the consciousness of one who had faith. But no sooner had he exclaimed, I believe, out of the enthusiasm of his will to believe, than old thought patterns arose to block his faith, and he said, Help thou mine unbelief. Faith, then, is more than an objective statement. Perfect faith cannot exist while there are subjective contradictions that deny the affirmation of the lips. It is only when the intellect is no longer obstructed by any negative reactions arising from experiences of doubt and fear that the words of the mouth can immediately bear fruit. Say, I believe with a deep inward calm, <clears throat> that my word of faith is the execution of spiritual law in my life. I have absolute reliance upon the law of good. I believe that the law of good will bring everything desirable into my experience. Today, I proclaim my divine inheritance. I am rich with the richness of God. I am strong with the power of God. I am guided by the wisdom of God. I am held in the goodness of God today. All right. <clears throat> so the two things that immediately spring to mind when I read things like that, one being hardball metaphysics and two being the point of spiritual practice. <clears throat> okay, so that statement of, let's, what was it? It is only when the intellect is no longer obstructed by negative reactions arising from the experiences of doubt or fear that the words of mouth can immediately bear fruit. Okay, that is what we call hardball metaphysics. Uh, it is not a term I came up with. Uh, it is a term that I borrowed from uh, Reverend Jesse. Because when you read Emma, and uh, sometimes when you read Ernest too, what you hear is hardball metaphysics. What you hear is... I say and immediately you will get and when we read Jesus we see the same thing Je when Jesus spoke his word stuff happened in pretty much immediately um but it doesn't seem to do that for us and it does have to do with that level of belief that that willingness to abandon everything to the belief to, to, to that, to that, to faith, to, to have such hardcore faith that it can't be any way but. And that's why he calls it hardball metaphysics, because it is hard um, for those of us who live in the messy, confusing material world. It is. Um, and it happens, there are times that it just happens. We've all had them, and that's part of what keeps us going. But that's where spiritual practice comes in. Because we do live in the messy and confusing material world. Because we have experiences that tell us, well, this can't happen this way. Um, and so then our, then our mind is our mind and our, and our mind and our heart are going, but we have experience that says it goes this way. And then 
it's like our mind our mind says well we have experience that it does this and our heart says but it could do this and so they're constantly back and forth and so um <clears throat> the point of spiritual practice is to work on coordinating the head and the heart to coordinate the heart's willingness to believe that we can absolutely have it this way with the mind going but the mind going but 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 we have experience that that differs from what you're saying um and so that that's that's what spiritual practice is spiritual practice is aligning the head aligning the heart aligning with the idea that this is possible and so we do it every day because practice makes permanent um practice works on the uh the belief and works on the faith and works us to the state where we go this is possible um it is a quote from audrey hepburn that said in i typed it the other day and i don't remember it but even in the word it's like nothing's impossible because even the word says i'm possible i am possible it's a matter of getting past the the idea, having the faith that it can be. Um, so when we read things like this, we're like, huh, but, but, and that's our head. And our heart's going, no, 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 it's possible, it's possible. So the spiritual practice helps to align the head and the heart so that it is possible. It is possible. Don't lose faith. Practice faith. You'll get there. You'll get there. All right. So my faith makes me whole. Yea, thou shalt not find any variableness in the way of God. Okay. That's from the Quran. God works the same way every time. We're the wild card. We're the one who can get in our own way. We can get out of our way. We can let other people get in our way. We can let circumstances in that. God works the same way every time. So, all right, faith is a mental attitude, straight up mental attitude. I like to call it truth plus imagination. That sounds right. Um, it's, it's, we know that's not, I don't know. Um, okay, I'm going to second guess myself, so I'm going to move on. Faith is a mental attitude. A certain man came to Jesus and from the inspiration of his hope, and the enthusiasm of the occasion and we all get carried away we get into situations and the faith is all around us and we're like yes this is possible you read emma yes this is possible and then you go out into the world and you go um but so we all have those moments it's the idea of keeping those moments going when the material world is going eh. um Standing in the light of one whose wick of life was ever kept trim and burning. Okay, that's Jesus. Because Jesus walked through the world almost entirely with the faith beyond. Almost entirely. If you go back and read the stories, there were a couple of moments. Um, in the garden, he had a moment. He, he was like, I don't want to do this. Let this cut pass from my lips. I don't want to do this. But he did it anyway, okay? So that's that's what we're talking about. Whose wick of life. He was plugged into that inexhaustible well. He knew he was plugged into that inexhaustible well. And almost every time was drawing from that well. And I think that's one of the beautiful things that people forget when they go and read the... When they hear the story of Jesus. He had his moments too. He had his moments too. He just had far fewer of them because he knew who he was. Um, feeling the warmth and color of its eternal glow and exclaimed, I believe. This was a simple, sincere, enthusiastic response to the consciousness of one who had faith. When you are in front of somebody who has the faith, it's easier to have faith. So when you're in the presence of all of the saints, it's easier to have faith. Uh, I was raised Catholic, hence the faith, the the, the saints. Um, it's when you're on your own. But that's when you carry what you've experienced with them. It's like, no, 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 no. 
I've got that flame. I've got that flame. That's why spiritual practice nurtures that flame. It trims that wig. It makes sure the wig is long enough to get down into that oil, into that inexhaustible well of oil. But you got to do your maintenance. You got to do your maintenance. And it's not unhelpful. It's in fact very helpful to put yourself into pre the presence of those people on a regular basis. I would argue that that was a central flame in going to church. It wasn't necessarily to learn what the Bible said, but to go and sit in the presence of somebody who believed, to, to sit in their fire and for that, for that brief period of time to allow your, your flame to be nourished by theirs so that you walked out into the world stronger. Is it that way anymore? Maybe, maybe not. You'd have to tell me your experience. Have you been in the presence of somebody? And if you find somebody, make sure that you put yourself in their presence frequently. Um, and you can do it. The, the, the beautiful thing about now is we have this. You can meet these people online and be in their presence. You can watch their videos and you can watch their live broadcasts and you can be in the presence of that faith so that you can be that man and you can nurture your flame. All right. I think I got off track. <laughs> it's easy to do. Um, but no sooner had he exclaimed, I believe, out of the enthusiasm of his will to believe, than an old thought than old thought patterns arose to block his faith, and he said, Help thou mine unbelief. Which is why I'm suggesting put yourself in the presence of those people. Do your spiritual practices. Um work on it. Faith is more than an objective statement. Perfect faith cannot exist while there, is, there are subjective contradictions that deny the affirmations of the lips. Okay? It is only when the intellect is no longer obstructed by negative reactions arising from the experiences of doubt and fear that the words of the mouth can immediately bear fruit. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice yourself. And then put yourself into places, experience people via whatever, you know, watch videos, watch live broadcasts, go to live services, or it did, it doesn't even have to be, not even necessarily church. You have people in your life that just believe. And it doesn't even have to be about God. You know, they can believe in the cause that they're working for. It doesn't have to have anything to do with religion, spirituality, or any of that. But you've got those people in your life. Spend more time with them and spend less time with the people telling you that you can't and the people telling you they can't. All right, so on to the treatment, affirmation, power statement part of the reading this month. So say, I believe with a deep inward calm that my word of faith is the execution of spiritual law in my life. I have absolute reliance upon the law of good. I believe that the law of good will bring everything desirable into my experience. Now, right there. If there's something that you're working on, there's something that you desire, something that you need, something that you want, that is an absolutely fantastic line to include in your treatments. I believe that the law of good will bring everything desirable into my experience. Or perhaps you are walking into a situation that you are concerned might be less than what you want. That's a good statement to use. Today, I proclaim my divine inheritance. And Ernest really is about that. He's like, know who you are. Know that you are a child of God. Know that you are a manifestation. Know that you are animated by God. Know that you are a divine spark. That you are a divine spirit. That all that God is, you have access to. 
know who you are. Today, I proclaim my divine inheritance. I am rich with the richness of God. I am strong with the power of God. I am guided by the wisdom of God. I am held in the goodness of God today. We are held in the goodness of God every day. But most days, it's our responsibility to look around and see it. Some days it just smacks us upside the head and can't help but see it. But most days, it is our responsibility to look around and go, I see it. To look around and see God looking back at us. To look in each other's eyes. To look in our own eyes. To look at every living thing around and see God. Because it's all God. We're all made from the same stuff. All right, our mission today, should we choose to accept it? Oof. Wow. I'm just going to go with that one line. Our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to believe with a deep and inward calm that our word of faith is the execution of the spiritual law of our life. To believe that there is a spiritual law and that we have the right, the divine right, the divine inheritance to command that law. To determine what is in our experience to know that we are the beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased and we can speak our word and have it not returned unto us void to know and we start by aligning our head and our heart we start by knowing who we are we start by recognizing God all around us we start by moving through this world knowing that is God made manifest. We start by knowing who we are. All right. And I just said who we are. Beloved children of God in whom God is well pleased. Always and forever. And knowing that it is a state of grace. That it is something we do not have to earn. And we cannot lose. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. All right, beloveds. I'm also going to, as I always do, encourage you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Whatever that looks like. Be it big, be it small, be it all day, be it just a cup of tea in the morning. Whatever it is, do something loving, do something kind, do something compassionate for yourself. Because if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. Dalai Lama. Um, it is important to practice upon yourself because you deserve it. It is important to practice because it moves it into a habit. It moves it into a default setting. It moves it into your first response instead of your second response. It also banks it. So when you meet people who need a little more kindness, a little more compassion, a little more love, you have plenty to share plenty to share. That's why. That's why I encourage it every day because that is a spiritual practice to be loving, kind, compassionate for your to yourself. All right, beloveds, I am going to also encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body today, whatever that looks like. I'm still bike riding. Loving it. Uh, although it's about to get cold, so <laughs> we're going to figure that out. Um, Go get a face full of sun. We do have some rain coming here, so do it early. And besides, it resets your hormones if you do it early. And drink plenty of water. All right, beloveds. Uh, do what you need to do to make it a wonderful day, a fantastic day, an amazing day, a great day. A good day. If that is too much pressure, simply have a day. And open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you you do live in heaven now. It is right here, right now, right where you are. It is up to us to see it. 
Uh, it is Tuesday night. I have no idea if there's anything going on. So if you want to check, please email info at creativelife.org. Get on the mailing list and then you can find out what we're doing any day of the week. Um, you can also check out the website, the Facebook page, the, the YouTube channel, and the Instagram. It's creativelife.org. Um, or create just Creative Life Spiritual Center on the various, and then Creative Life Spark is the Instagram. I am the Running Rev Ryan on the three social media platforms, so you can check me out there. I don't have a website yet. Give me time. All right. Um, know that you're loved, and know that Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you at 9 a.m. Take care of yourself, and know that you're loved always. Until next time.